acid base balance and arterial blood gases. The learning objectives of this module are to identify the process to maintain acid base balance, discuss the etiology, laboratory diagnostic findings, clinical manifestations, and nursing and collaborative management of the following acid base imbalances metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, and respiratory alkalosis. The body normally maintains a steady balance between acid produced during metabolism and bases that neutralize and promote the excretion of acids. Typically your body does this independently, but there are some health problems that can lead to imbalances in the acid-base balance. Common health problems include diabetes, renal failure, vomiting and diarrhea, respiratory conditions, which a common one would be COPD, chronic obstructed pulmonary disease. But the body has three ways that they try to maintain balance. The body tries to maintain balance through buffers, the respiratory system, and the renal system. The pH of your blood is very important in maintaining acid-base balance. The pH typically is a measurement of hydrogen ion concentration. If there are increased hydrogen ions, you will have acidity, meaning that your pH will be less than 7.35, and this is referred to as acidosis. If you have a decreased hydrogen ion content, it will lead to alkalinity, which means your pH will be greater than 7.45, and this is referred to as alkalosis. You can see that there is a very small range for normal pH, so 7.35 to 7.45. Out of those ranges, the patient can be acidotic or alkalotic, and it can eventually, if uncorrected, result in death. The buffer is the fastest acting system and the primary regulator of acid-base balance. Buffers act chemically to change strong acids to weak acids or to neutralize acids. The buffers in the body include carbonic acid bicarbonate, monohydrogen dihydrogen phosphate, intracellular and plasma proteins, and hemoglobin buffers. The respiratory system is the second system to respond to changes in acid-base balance, and typically the respiratory system responds within minutes to hours when there is a change. The lungs help maintain normal pH by excreting CO2 and water. A patient can respond by having increased respirations, meaning that more CO2 will be expelled and less will remain in the blood. This will lead to less carbonic acid and less hydrogen ions. With decreased respirations, more CO2 will remain in the blood, and this will lead to an increased carbonic acid and more hydrogen ions. If it is a respiratory problem that is causing the imbalance, the respiratory system loses its ability to correct the pH. Also, there are other times when the respiratory system is unable to correct the pH on its own, and then the renal system will kick in. The renal system will eliminate hydrogen and reabsorb bicarbonate, but typically the renal system does not begin to regulate acid-base imbalance until several hours and sometimes days after the imbalance has occurred. The three mechanisms of acid elimination by the renal system is secretion of small amounts of free hydrogen into the renal tubule, combination of hydrogen with ammonia to form ammonium, and the excretion of weak acids. Acid base imbalances typically occur when the compensatory mechanisms fail. Respiratory acidosis typically occurs when there is hypoventilation, so CO2 is being retained. This oftentimes happens in respiratory failure. You'll see this in your COPD patients and patients with severe pneumonia.
So typically to compensate for respiratory acidosis, the kidneys conserve bicarbonate and secrete an increased concentration of hydrogen ions into the urine. During acute respiratory acidosis, the renal comp compensatory mechanism doesn't usually happen until about 24 hours after the person has become acidotic. Respiratory alkalosis typically occurs with hyperventilation, so the patient is having excessive CO2 excretion. This often occurs with prolonged hypoxemia, and this can happen from acute pulmonary disorders. It can also happen with a patient who has hypoxia, a pulmonary embolism, or a patient who is on a ventilator and they're having mechanical overventilation. Now typically with metabolic alkalosis, compensation doesn't occur because the patient is hypoxic or hypoxemic. So typically there is aggressive treatment that is occurring to kind of reverse the effects of the hypoxia or the hypoxemia. So typically the patient doesn't have an opportunity to compensate. But while this is occurring, the kidneys will begin to excrete bicarbonate. Metabolic acidosis can occur when there's an inability to excrete acid or an excess loss of base. Some conditions when there is an accumulation of acids would be in ketoacidosis or lactic acid accumulation, which typically results in shock. Loss of bicarbonate when there is severe diarrhea. In kidney disease, there can be an inability to reabsorb bicarb and hydrogen ions. So typically, the compensatory mechanism in response to metabolic acidosis is to increase CO2 excretion from the lungs. So this may be where you see a patient having cosmoal respirations, which are deep, rapid breathing. Also, the kidneys will attempt to excrete additional acid. Metabolic alkalosis can result from a loss of acid, so this can occur from prolonged vomiting or someone who has gastric suction for an extended period of time. If you have a gain of a too much base, so someone who is ingesting too much baking soda or antacids, it can also happen to patients on high levels of mineral corticoids. The compensatory method for metabolic alkalosis, you would see the patient having a decreased respiratory rate and this would to increase the plasma levels of the CO2. You may also see renal excretion of the bicarb. So understanding and being able to evaluate your patient's arterial blood gases is very important. This can provide you information to determine which acid base imbalance your patient may be having. It can also let you know when you're assessing your patient their ability to regulate their own pH and it can also give you an idea of their overall oxygenation status. There are six steps in the diagnosis an interpretation of ABG values. First, you evaluate the patient's pH level. You're going to analyze the PaCO2, which is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood. You're going to analyze the bicarbonate level. You're going to determine if the carbon dioxide and the bicarbonate level matches the alteration, and then you'll decide if the body is attempting to compensate. You will use these tables to help you decide if your patient is in a respiratory or metabolic imbalance 
and if they are acidotic or alkalotic. You will also use this to determine if the patient is compensating or uncompensated. These will be tables that you will want to memorize. You will use this table to help you decide if your patient is in a respiratory or a metabolic imbalance and if they are acidotic or alkalotic. You will also use this to determine if the patient is compensated or uncompensated. This will be a chart that you will also want to memorize. There is an acronym that you can use to help you determine if the patient is in respiratory or metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. And it's Rome, R-O-M-E. So typically, if it's a respiratory problem, when you're looking at your pH, and for respiratory we look at pH and our CO2, our carbon dioxide. So if our pH and our CO2 are opposite, we would believe that it is a respiratory problem. When we look at the pH, we can decide if the pH is high, the person has alkalosis, and if the pH is low, they have acidosis. So a patient with a high pH and a low CO2 would have respiratory alkalosis. When we're looking for a metabolic problem, they will be equal, meaning that the pH will, man it, will match the bicarb. So for metabolic, we're looking at pH and bicarb. So if our pH is low and our bicarbonate is low, we would have metabolic acidosis. If the pH is high and the bicarb is high, we would have metabolic alkalosis. So together, let's analyze and interpret the ABG results for this patient. To do this, since we have not memorized our ABG labs or the table yet to help us interpret, we'll want to look at both of those as we analyze these labs. So first, we'll look at the pH, and the pH is 7.34, so it's less than the 7.35 to 7.45 value, so the patient is acidotic. We will then look at the PCA PCO2, the carbon dioxide, and we see that it's 67. So that's elevated. So right away, if we think back to our Rome, respiratory opposite, because they're opposite, one is low and one is high, we can assume that we have respiratory acidosis. As we further go on to see if this patient is compensated or not compensated, we won't use the PaO2 to determine the ABG levels, but we want to know the PaO2 so we can decide whether or not this patient may be ex exhibiting some hypoxemia. So by looking at this, we can see that the oxygen level is low, so we would be concerned about that, but we would not use that in our interpretation of ABGs. We would then move on to our bicarbonate level, which is 37. So when we look at our chart, we know that that is high, so we have a high bicarbonate level. So when we go down and look at our chart, we can see that the low pH, the high CO2, and the high bicarbonate indicate that our patient is in respiratory acidosis and that they are compensated. And we're saying that it's compensated because the patient has begun to try to regulate that acid-base imbalance, so they are conserving the bicarbonate so they can excrete it in the urine. So let's interpret this one, again, looking at our charts together. When we look at the pH, we see that it is low. It is less than 7.35, so we know that it's acidosis. The PCO2 is 38, and we see that that is normal. The PaO2, we will look at and see that it is low, and we'll use that when we assess our patient, but for now we will not need that again in our in interpretation of the ABGs. When we look at the bicarb level, it is 15, which is also low.
So when we think about our ROM acronym, the M and the E for metabolic, they are equal, so they match. They both go in the same direction, the pH and the bicarb. So we would determine that we have metabolic acidosis. When we look at our chart, we see that our P, PaCO2 is normal, so we have uncompensated metabolic acidosis. And at this point, the lungs have not kicked in trying to compensate for that metabolic acidosis. Once they begin to try to compensate for our patient with metabolic acidosis, we would see that the patient would have cosmoal respirations. That would be the patient having deep, rapid breaths as they try to excrete CO2. So if they had been compensating, our CO2 levels would be decreased because the patient would be blowing off that CO2.